Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday morning. I don't know about you guys. I'm glad it's Saturday. Like, I need a five-minute breather from all of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? As usual, there's a ton of stuff. Let's jump in. Let's get there. Let's go. We're going to start off with Duchess Sophie this morning. She and Edward, well, they're patrons of the Haddo House Choral and Operatic Society. And on October 7th, they attended a concert at Haddo House. And afterwards, they went out into the audience to speak to some of the kids. Very nice. Sticking with Sophie, on Thursday, remember, she's still in Addis Ababa. She went to an event at the, I hope I say this right, the Burhanian Salam Printing Enterprise. 900 staff members were given free eye tests and instructions on how to, you know, take care of their vision. There were also performances by a police marching band and some children. Super nice. A big thank you to Remilad Sauce for letting us know that she is wearing a midi dress from Zimmerman and she has one of her favorite Louisa bags in orange from Sophie Habsburg. Moving on. Still sticking with Sophie, Oscar International. These are the people that, you know, work with the vision. Um, they put up a post because Sophie joined their UK team and spoke about Oscar's work with people from low-income families in India. And she thanked Bradfield for the fundraising and wonderful. And a big thank you to Remilad Sauce for the information on what she was wearing. Moving on. Moving on now to Princess Anne. She went to a gala for Scots in London and she gave an opening address, um, you know, an opening speech. And um, they had the Tartan Thistle Dancers and the Scots Care Choir. Looks like they had a great time. Still sticking now with Princess Anne. She opened the new St. John Ambulance Hub in Castle Donington on October 10th. Now this new hub brings together lots of specialties. You have the St. John Ambulance Activity and six other services that make up the NHS Midlands Critical Care Transfer Service. So this is where they move critically ill people between hospitals, you know, for um, specialist treatment. She got to see children show how to do CPR. She was taken on a tour of the building so she could see how everything works together and allows for smoother communication and partnership between, you know, all the different areas. And of course she unveiled a plaque, lovely. Moving on now to Queen Camilla at Clarence House the other night, she had supporters and friends and previous winners of the Forward Prize for Poetry she had them over to mark 30 years of the Forward Arts Foundation and to thank them for their work in supporting and promoting poetry in the UK. Very nice. She looks lovely. Let's move on now to Princess Eugenie. She and her husband are having their five-year wedding anniversary. Has it really been five years? But yeah. So to mark that, she put up some fabulous photos of her and her husband and them with the two kids. I, those kids, hard to believe that little one, it's, the little one ain't so little anymore. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay, I'm going to veer away from the Royals again because you guys know whenever something new shows up, I like to give you updates. You guys remember yesterday I was telling you about the truck that's driving around the school showing the names of all the people who signed that horrible letter blaming the entire thing on Israel and then they got upset because, you know, now they're being named and shamed. It would appear that a lot of people are backtracking on that letter now because they realize they're in big trouble and it was a stupid thing to do. Now, here's one board member who says that he didn't even see the statement until, of course, he signed it. Here's a person who's claiming that this is an unprecedented level of harassment and it's unnecessary. Just as an FYI, in case you didn't see it, there's the uh, joint statement. There's all the people who signed it. Yeah, everybody's running. I got to be honest, though. I think it's a little too little, a little too late. If your name is already on a list putting out some bullcrap little apology I don't think is going to save your career. I myself cannot imagine these kids must be in absolute panic mode. Anyway, believe it or not, the Arab Alumni Association at Harvard is now asking Harvard to support the Arab students, giving them free uh, attorneys and free this and free that because they may need some support. 
Could you imagine you go to law school, you graduate, you, you hustle to get a job at a law firm, you work your way up, you make your career, then you become an, an instructor at one of these great schools only to lose your job because you pick on a Jewish student. This person will never work again anywhere. I hope they have enough money put aside. You watch, they'll put out an apology trying to get their job back. Moving on. All right, moving on, we're going to Neil Sean now, who just put up a video talking about how Netflix was losing patience with Harry and Meghan because they weren't getting anything for their money. He said Netflix was losing subscribers, losing employees, and by the way, they never had any intention of doing Pearl. They were just pandering to Harry and Meghan. So Neil pointed out that they went ahead and they're recreating the car crash that killed Diana, although they're saying they did it tastefully. I, I can't imagine how you would do something like that tastefully. And they're also bringing up the fact they're completely leaving reality and they're bringing Diana back as a ghost. Yes, they're going to have the ghost of Diana. Now, keep in mind the Crown has already shown Diana as a drunk, as somebody who used the HIV patients for nothing but publicity, that she was a, a money monger. They've said some really nasty things about her. According to Neil, they really just don't care about Harry, which is why they're going to talk about the Nazi costume incident. Now, of course, we know Harry blamed William and Catherine, but somehow I don't think that's going to make it into the story. Uh, so according to Neil Sean, the Netflix would not be upset if they walked. Hmm, I bet. Moving on. All right, you guys, a blind item came out saying that basically Megan wants to do appearances by herself, but they don't really want to see her alone. They're really interested to draw as Harry. But Harry doesn't want to be a part of this TIG thing that she's turning on because apparently the people she's partnering with aren't all that great. Now, of course, with everything going on, Harry and Meghan are trying to stay relevant. So now they're releasing, they're drip feeding these articles, ooh, behind the scenes. Now, again, look how the other women are dressed and look how Meghan's dressed, okay? But the point is, even on Twitter, they're trying to drop, they're having bot farms, we know they exist, okay? They're, they're having bot farms put out these articles. Uh, they're dropping them right and left of all different kinds because they're trying to stay in the news. What did I tell you guys the other day? It's like every time they go to do something, first it was COVID, now there's a war. It, it's like God is telling them to sit down and shut up, but they're not paying attention. But they're drip feeding these articles because they want you to pay attention to them. It's like they've forgotten that there are people losing their lives, uh, you know, on the other part of the world. Instead, I completely agree with this. This is an advertisement for Meghan Markle, paid for by Meghan Markle. She has the bot farms. We know they exist. And this is what's going on now. I think it's just shameful. Now, I want to take another look really quickly at this comment, at this statement put out by Harry and Meghan, because I thought it was very self-serving. Well, you know me, I love GB News. They had something to say. My goodness, listen to this. Israel, so it was hours after Kate and William did it, uh, with a lot of focus on what they are doing rather than the victims. So a post on their Archwell website titled, With Heavy Hearts, read, at the Archwell Foundation with Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, we stand against all acts of terrorism and brutality. We are supporting our partners and organisations on the front lines in Israel to provide the urgent aid needed and to help all innocent victims of this unconscionable <laughs> level of human suffering. Lady C, are the couple still using <laughs> tragedies to publicise themselves, do you think? Self-promoting jerks who don't know their place. Phil, uh, the, Harry and Meghan need to remember their place. Well, I think, they, I think Lady C is right. They don't represent anyone. Uh, it's interesting that they said that their Archwell Foundation is helping people on the ground and working with charities. I'd like to know what exactly those are. Yeah. It's good for them, isn't it? Talking about international relations, but they can't even sort out their own family. That is, you know what? You do make an interesting point there, Phil. I, I think possibly uh, a lack of self-awareness. Lady C's... So what Phil was saying there was that, you know, look, with respect, they can't even sort out their respective families, can they? So the idea that they're going to sort out the conflict between Palestine and Israel is a bit fanciful. Spot on comments. Moving on. OK, this is one of the two big stories for today. Do you guys remember when author and trauma specialist Gabor Matei 
interviewed Harry, okay, they, in March. And Matei says, you know, Harry was like, oh, I had such a good childhood growing up. And Matei looked at him and goes, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. And Harry was like, oh, I didn't. He literally diagnosed him with ADD in the middle of this live interview. Uh, everybody was like, this is beyond inappropriate. So Harry was just eating up everything this guy had to say. He talked about all kinds of things. Interestingly enough, he did not mention William, which was everybody thought it was really interesting. But you had to pay to be privy to this conversation. Well, people jumped all over this. And now this guy is saying that this interview has essentially negatively impacted him. In essence, he's been markled. He has now come out and said flat out, I regret doing the chat with him. He said it's had a profound negative effect on him. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's not doing well. He says, okay, so first of all, he says he lost himself. That's what he said. I lost myself and I didn't follow my gut about this interview, which was organized by P Penguin Random House. So he went on this podcast and he said, I just had a gut feeling I shouldn't do this the way they'd set it up because in order to watch it, you had to buy a copy of Harry's book. And I thought, this is unfair. Four million people have already bought the book. Why can't they just watch the interview? Why do they have to have another copy? Uh, in other words, he's saying now this should have been a free public service on a part of two people having an interesting conversation. But he flat out said, listen, this was opportunistic. I agreed to it. I didn't follow my gut. It was a mistake. And um, yeah, it hasn't turned out well for him. Go figure. Moving on. All right. Now, this is not the second big story, but it's still out there. I still want to cover it. Harry and Meghan are now getting fresh backlash for hypocrisy upon hypocrisy. This latest controversy has to do with the fact that while they both attended, while well, William and Catherine attended something and Harry and Meghan attended something, they went with a huge car convoy, an army of SUVs to take them 200 feet around a block. It's unnecessary fuel consumption after their constant preach about climate change. And it's just become such of a joke. You know, this is no different than when Harry flew to Polo on a private jet and his kit was transported separately in another car. <laughs> you know, this is right after Harry addressed the UN General Assembly saying climate change was wreaking havoc on our planet with the most vulnerable suffering most of all. And we know the last time they were in New York, they talked about the New York car chase and the mayor and the police chief all said it couldn't happen. But of course, they have to keep up the facade that it did. And that's why they need the seven car parade around the corner. Uh-huh. All right, let's move on to our big story for today. All right, this article came out. This for me is the big story of today. This article came out. You know, Harry and Meghan were in New York warning of the dangers of social media, but yet their horrible treatment of William and Catherine shows that their commitment to promoting mental health is crap, essentially. It's really sickening what Harry and Meghan have done, especially to William and Catherine, not to mention both of their respective families. I mean, you guys, they used Omid Scobie to write Finding Freedom to make themselves look like victims. They went on the Oprah show and told what is now proven to be verified lies. Megan had her friends go to People Magazine to turn the tide against her father and her sister, even though it was proven later she lied. Then they used the Netflix docu-series to again slam the family, calling them Empire 2.0. Don't forget about the me you can't see, where Harry whined about his family. How about the cut interview where Megan threatened the family saying, I never signed an NDA, I can do what I want. How about the spare where they said Harry basically trashed his family? How about the palace staff members who were bullied by Megan? And let's not forget about their fan base. They are well aware of them because when they, when they phoned a fan that was connected to one of the worst Twitter accounts that had thrown such abuse at Harry's brother, sister-in-law, nephews and niece, 
Their response was no comment. I mean, it's pretty obvious that Harry and Meghan are the king and queen of bullying, and the main person other than King Charles they've been bullying is William. We know from previous interviews that William encouraged Harry to go seek mental health, but of course, Harry's denying that now, and he's saying it's all Meghan. And we also know that he's blaming uh, William and Catherine for not getting Megan support when supposedly she had issues of her own, although he later admitted he didn't tell anybody that Megan was having issues. So the truth of the matter is, Harry and Megan have weaponized the media, they've weaponized the internet, they've weaponized their fans. So that's why nobody wants to listen to them anymore. All right, you guys know what to do. Leave those comments, make them good. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you've donated to my coffee fund or through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.